Hello everybody. Um, so what we're going to be talking about today is this concept of nutrient density. This is one of my favorite things to discuss with people because it's it needs to be talked about more. And if you are trying to eat a healthier diet, and especially if you're trying to work on uh, either maintaining a healthy weight or achieving a healthier weight, I find this is one of the best ways to do so. So nutrient density is looking at how much of a particular nutrient there is in a pound of food. So if I want to know, well, what's higher in vitamin A, this vegetable or this vegetable, if I look at a pound of each, the one that per pound has the most vitamin A would be the more vitamin-rich food. So um, if we look at the way we eat food, it's more closely linked to the way our bodies are designed. And what I mean by that is we're designed to eat until we're full. And the way that our stomachs register fullness is by how much it sinks and stretches. So pounds, the weight of the food we eat, is a much better indicator of how much that food is going to fill us up than the volume. You know, a cup of cooked oats versus a cup of blueberries weigh very different amounts and one is going to fill me up more than the other. It doesn't make one healthier than the other, but it makes a difference to how filling that food is going to be. So when we talk about uh, portion control in terms of, well, this is a teaspoon and this is a tablespoon and this is three ounces of this or that, that's nice information, but what if I eat three ounces of a food and I'm still hungry? Do I just not eat it because, well, that was three ounces and that's my serving? That's a very poor way to manage our food. Our brains want us to eat till we're full. So using nutrient density can help do that. But things that help food weigh more and therefore be more filling typically are water and fiber. They are thick when they mix together and they sink and stretch the belly. When we process our food, we lose water, because if it's full of water, it'll rot on the shelf, so they have to take it out. It loses fiber, because they have to, as a process of taking the water out, they grind away all the fiber. We lose vitamins, we lose minerals, we go from a complex starch to a refined sugar, and we gain high concentrated amounts of sugar, salt, fat, and just overall processed ingredients. So processed food completely disrupts this process and it makes it easier to overeat on these foods that have been processed because they lose all the things that make us feel full. So for an example, if I took two little pieces, like I don't know, a quarter sized or more of a fried chicken versus a cup and a quarter of a vegetable lentil soup, they are both 100 calories. Which one do you think if you ate was gonna leave you feeling fuller? Hopefully the soup comes to mind because it's bigger, there's more volume of it, and it's heavier. Two little pieces of chicken on a toothpick never filled anybody up. So if I'm hungry and I'm at a, a work function or anywhere and this is the appetizer, it suddenly becomes really easy to eat, what do you think, six, eight, ten of those before you might feel full? So you're eating somewhere between 600 or so calories where one bowl of soup was 100 to give you the same amount of fullness, but one is gonna give a ton more calorie in the process. If I look at something like an apple, two apples are about 200 calories. If I'm feeling pretty hungry, one apple, two, that's 200 calories. Two one ounce slices of cheese is 200 calories. Which one is gonna be easier to overeat on? You see, go to, next time you're at a, a function, there's little cubes of cheese on toothpicks. You can eat a ton of those throughout the course of an evening. Nobody's eating apple after apple after apple after apple. So same amount of calorie, two very different effects on our fullness. Things like potato chips versus pasta. You know, potato chips, they're full of oil, they're dry, they're salty, which drives our appetite. You know, if I'm feeling hungry for a snack, why does it always have to be a chip or a cracker? Why not eat leftover cooked pasta with sauce or veggies or something on it? Same amount of calorie. One is, if nothing else, at least healthier than the other, but it's gonna fill me up a lot faster than a handful. A handful of chips is a cup. Have you ever eaten one handful of chips and said, that was enough, maybe four or five or six? Well, now that's 12 to 1,500 calories. That could be a day's worth of calories just from those potato chips alone. And then finally, nuts. Nuts are very healthy, nuts are great, but a lot of people eat meals of nuts. They think, oh, I'll just eat a cup of walnuts or a cup of cashews as a snack. That's 800 calories. You could take six potatoes, bake them, and stuff them with salsa and get 800 calories. 
which is going to fill you up more? Could you even eat six baked potatoes over the course of a meal, or could you eat one, maybe two, before you'd feel full? So this is the point we're trying to get across. It's not that you can't eat nuts. It's not that you can't eat cheese. It's not that you can't eat a little cube of fried chicken. But if we base our meals on that, if we kind of just mindlessly eat those foods, that's why we get so many calories in our diet. Because instead of basing our meals on more filling food, we're sabotaging ourselves. So this is this nutrient density, or more specifically here, calorie density chart um, that Jeff Novick put together that I think really sums up this message really well and very uh, clearly. So vegetables, fruits, unprocessed complex carbohydrates, things like whole grains or starchy vegetables, beans and lentils, legumes, these are all in the green. These are foods that you could never overeat, no matter what your health needs are, no matter what I guarantee you, you could never overeat on these foods because they're so full of fiber and water and nutrients, they're so filling, you'd be stuffed before you could ever get to the point of overeating. So if we base our meals down here, if we get 70, 80 or more percent of our food from legumes, complex carbs, vegetables, fruits, we are really eating a healthy diet. Fatty protein, these are animal foods, eggs, dairy, fish, pork, poultry, red meat, things like this, 1,000 calories a pound, this starts to get into that realm of easier to overeat on. So that doesn't mean that you can't eat them, it's just that we don't want to base our meal on them. Instead of having a bowl of yogurt with blueberries for breakfast, have a gigantic bowl of fruit salad that I drizzle some yogurt on on top. Instead of having a you know, six egg omelet, have a bunch of vegetables, you know, spinach and basil and onions and garlic and tomatoes and mushrooms and all these other things sauteed together and crack an egg in there right at the end and scramble it in. Um, tiny things, instead of having a steak, take a couple ounces of steak, chop it up and mix it into a rice and vegetable dish. You're still getting that food in there, you still get the flavor, but instead of having it be the majority of that meal, it's actually the smallest part and it's mixed in with all these other healthier foods down there. Processed carbohydrate, these are things like white rice, white flour, white pasta, white sugar, very calorie dense, junk food, chips and crackers and cookies and, and snack cakes, things like this, 2300 calories a pound. These are incredibly calorie dense foods. Not to pick on them, but I hate the idea of 100 calorie packs. Whoever got full from a 100 calorie pack, just because it's 100 calories for three little chocolate chip cookies, do you feel full afterwards? They have nothing filling in them. We want to get things that will actually fill us up if we're looking for a snack. Nuts and seeds, oil. Oil is 4,000 calories a pound. Nothing is more calorie dense than oil. The reason we bring this up is if I'm cooking and I glug a lot of olive oil over my food because someone somewhere told me it was good for my hair and my heart, it's a lot of calories coming in. So instead of frying my food in oil, always cooking food in oil, using oil as a salad dressing all the time, can I switch it down, just a little drizzle of oil? You can saute your food in actually in water or stock or something flavorful instead of always cooking in oil. Tiny changes, flipping this chart so that this becomes the majority of what we eat and everything else down there is like a seasoning or a condiment or just a little sprinkle of something in at the end. So be mindful of this. Really load up on the fruits, the veggies, the complex carbohydrates, the beans and lentils. Make them the biggest part of your diet. Then all the other things, the nuts and seeds, the oil, the animal food, any processed food, they're just the last little accompaniment at the end. They're just to add some variety or interest or flavor to your food. Same thing, giant steak, little cooked vegetable versus a ton of cooked vegetables with a little bit of a uh, couple strips of steak stir fried into it. That's the concept we're trying to go for. It doesn't mean you have to give up on any of these foods, just switching the proportion you will see miraculous things happen very easily. So just some food for thought, if you will, about ways that we can bring in healthier food and feel really full to either maintain or get to a healthier weight. Never hesitate to reach out and uh, ask any questions that might come up. I hope that you found this information helpful and be well.